Sadly, an important part of team leadership is handling problems. So in this video, I want to give a short introduction to eight of the common problems that you will need to handle as a team leader. The first problem to discuss is trust. And I'm choosing to discuss this first because it is often at the root of other problems. And the simple fact is that if there is a failure of trust, either among team members or trust of team members for you, or indeed your trust in your team members, whichever breakdown there is, you need to tackle it head on. You need to get it out into the open and then you need to work on it. And while you are working on it, the best way to start to rebuild that trust is to act as if and to only call things out if people betray that trust actively. Don't assume that people aren't trustworthy. Assume they are and then call them out if they're not. But the components of trust are many. And therefore, understanding why trust is broken down amounts to figuring out which component is likely to be the weakest. Is it all about acting with self-interest? If someone acts with too much self-interest, then people won't trust them. So pro-social behaviours become important. It's also important for people to act consistently and reliably and diligently to do what they undertake to do. So are people betraying trust in that way? We also trust people when we feel they know what they are doing and that they are doing the right things. But there's another element to look after. And finally, we trust people when we feel we get to know one another. So another way to build trust is to build a level of appropriate intimacy. Encourage people to share something about themselves. And therefore, social interactions are a great way to build trust because it tends to be in social contexts that people are most willing to share things about themselves. The next problem is poor communication. And guess what? If communication is poor, you need to get the team together and talk about it. Often, communication within a team is poor because people aren't talking to one another enough. They're using other poorer modes of communication like email. Get people together, acknowledge the problem and ask people the best way to communicate within this team. Ask each person what they want, what they see as the strengths of the team in terms of communication and what gaps they want to see filled. What new processes, what new procedures, what new habits they want to see people getting into. Set the team the task of making a short list of the most important things prioritizing that list and then setting an objective to work on one or two priorities over the coming weeks and then bring the team back together to review the progress they've made and to set new priorities for themselves. Ultimately, the best way to improve communication is to make it happen by bringing people together. Third on my list is lack of transparency. This is about not sharing information appropriately, and this could be due either to a lack of trust or poor communication in general. But I'm going to assume that we fix those problems. And this one is down to people thinking that hoarding information to themselves is giving them a measure of power. This is about encouraging people to recognize that the team is only as strong as the weakest link. And therefore, if you create a weak link by not sharing information you have, then you are weakening the team and therefore weakening yourself. There is no power in having knowledge if you're not able to use it yourself. And if you are able to use that knowledge yourself to the detriment of people around you, that is not a team behavior. And you as team leader must not be prepared to accept that kind of behavior. And this extends to you. An important part of your role as team leader is to make sure that information sharing happens, which means talking to your colleagues and then spreading that information among them. 
And when you're doing that, encourage people to share information amongst themselves and so build a robust team structure. Conflict is an obvious team problem and in a good, well-performing team, people will resolve most conflict easily amongst themselves. However, sometimes you will need to step in if the conflict escalates too much, tempers and passions rise, then you need to step in to help to de-escalate the conflict. As a team leader, a great set of skills to get is the, the whole principle of mediation, of, of listening to each person, interpreting each person's point of view for the other, and facilitating an agreement. Sometimes, however, mediation isn't enough, and you will sometimes need to arbitrate. You will sometimes need to understand the points of view of both people, to assess them and to decide which is the right and the fair and the best resolution to the conflict. And if necessary, you also need to be willing to enforce that resolution if you have to. Competing can be a good thing. It can raise the team performance up, but it can also be toxic if people within your team are competing amongst themselves to the detriment of the team because the way that they're competing isn't about being the best I can be, but also helping you to trip up, then you need to deal with that. You need to take a firm hand and speak to people clearly about it. You need to set out why it's not acceptable and why and how you will not accept it. My sixth team problem is sometimes called siloing. Individuals or groups within the team move in different directions or hold work to themselves. And the best way I know to resolve this kind of silo, stovepipe type kind of mentality is to mix the team up frequently, to put different team members into different roles so that we understand each other's priorities and we start to become multi-skilled across the different areas of the team's interest. The seventh team problem can be a huge one. It is demotivation. Now, if it's one individual, you need to figure out what are the levers to help motivate them. If it's a whole team, then chances are there is something systemic going on. And usually this is not about them not being motivated. It is about them being actively demotivated by something being wrong or missing. Look at things like, has something been done that is not fair, that people are perceiving as inequitable? Is there something missing in terms of the resources the team has or the environment in which they're being asked to work or the way that people are treating one another? There are lots of reasons why people become demotivated, but it is rarely because there isn't anything motivating them. Look at our video on Hertzberg's two-factor theory to better understand the difference between motivators on the one hand and demotivators or hygiene factors on the other. In fact, we have a whole series on motivation. So if this is an issue for you, then take a look at some of those videos to get ideas about the way you can fix motivation problems within your team. My final team problem is underperformance. And of course, there are loads of reasons why teams and individuals underperform. But common ones include lack of confidence, lack of motivation, which we've spoken about, or lack of ability. Now, lack of ability is relatively easy to address. It's about giving people skills. You can do that through training, through coaching, through mentoring, through job sharing through partnering there are lots of ways to build ability more insidious in underperformance is lack of confidence lack of confidence comes because people do not feel that you trust them or they do not recognize the skills they have and the best way to boost confidence therefore is to actively recognize people's skills and help them to see what they are good at so that they can grow their confidence. Set them tasks which stretch them, but not so far that they are fearful of failure. If you give people tasks that are too easy, then they become complacent and they underperform for other reasons. 
So there we have eight fundamental team leadership problems that you will need to deal with through a career as a team leader. I've chosen not to go into any of them in depth because there are other resources, many of which we either have provided already or will be providing in the near future at management courses. But this is a flavor of how to solve the common team leadership problems. And I hope it's been helpful to you. If it has, please do give us a thumbs up if you like this video. I'll be creating loads more great management courses content. So please do subscribe to our channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any of it. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. And in the meantime, keep learning.